John, that stuff's gonna kill you. I'll be downstairs. Are you Donald Strachey? Yeah. Donald Strachey, the private eye? What can I do for you? Oh, you've already done enough. <laughs> Thanks to those pictures you took, my husband wants a divorce. Just want you to know you're an asshole. Yeah. That's not news. <laughs> A little respect, huh? What's the problem? You don't want to invite me down here. To take a picture of the senator visiting the bishop in a hospital. He's in a coma. She's, she's consoling one of his priests. Get it? I get it. Her district has a lot of Catholic voters. You don't have to get it that much. Senator, we're ready. Church and stay together. Give me conflict. Give me tension. Just, just take a picture. Dr. Julia, I don't, I don't let anybody into this hospital. Uh, I tipped the mater d' a fiver. He promised me my own IV bag. What are you doing here? Got a new client. How goes your photo op? Well, I'll have you know, Senator Glassman is genuinely concerned about the bishop. Thank you. <laughs> he took a nasty fall in the rectory last week. Gave himself a skull fracture. Mm -hmm. With the senator down the polls, you figure a get well visit's got to be worth my two. Points. You have no appreciation for my integrity at all, do you? I love your integrity. You want to take it to an empty room? We can try out the rubber gloves. You're disgusting. Mm -hmm. That's why you love me. Show me confusion. Show me the ennui of life. That's enough. Thank you. Thank you. Make sure you send the contacts to our office, all right? You know, the camera loves this whole daddy thing you got. Bye. Well, Senator, again, thank you very much for taking the time to see the bishop. You're welcome, Father. I'll keep him in my prayers. Please do. Mm. Good phone, Senator. Thank you. So, Timothy, have you ever thought about returning to the seminary? You were the best student we ever had. Well, it depends. Has the company changed its policy on gay marriage? 
I think we've still got a ways to go there. And then I think I'll, I'll stick with the home team. God bless. Thank you. Ah, it's not Detective Nora Charles. I'm the senator. It's still raking the muck? You still slinging the mud? Whenever I can. No more time for riffraff. Senator, your speech is in your briefcase. Your briefcase is in the back of the car, and we have to go. He is such a slave driver. You don't have to tell me. <laughs> <laughs> Who's the new client? I don't know. You wouldn't tell me. Ooh, a mystery. Tell me later? I don't know. You may have to force it out of me. Even better. Don't tell me. Strachey? Depends on who you are. Eddie Santon, we spoke on the phone. I recognize your picture from the paper, the Purcell case. That was really something. Yeah, classic. That guy in a locked room. What are we doing in the hospital? You don't look sick. I'm not the one who's hiring you. Donald Strachey? John Rutka. Hello. Bye. Someone tried to kill him. Yeah, I'm not surprised. You know my work. Unfortunately. We're on the web, too. The Rocket Report. We get over 8,000 hits a week. I wouldn't touch that shit with a 10-foot pole. I'm surprised they even let you in here after you ruined Dr. Polk's life. Please. Ed Polk was the head of the hospital board and the biggest rest stop queen on the New York State Thruway. And for that, he deserves to lose his job and his family and everything he's worked for, huh? Well, he shouldn't have voted against expanding HIV care in this hospital. He got what he deserved. Maybe you did too. What? By having someone break into our home and shoot him? If you were shot, the police are involved. What do you need me for? Because the cops couldn't care less about us faggots. You know that. Look, Strachey, I need your help. You're the only gay private eye in the Capital District. Maybe in all of New York State. I see you figured that would make me sympathetic to your case. Is that it? Well, you figured wrong. Good luck with your ballet career. What else did he say? Yeah. <laughs> Hold on. Excuse me, sir. Visiting hours are over. Leave, I'll have to call security. Where is he? Mr. Rudka checked himself out. Are you a friend? Well, did you want to leave the flowers? There. Let you keep the rain out for a while? For a while? I thought you said the fireplace would be finished last week. These old houses aren't as easy as they look, you know? You can't just rush the job. You gotta coax them, finesse them. Make them feel loved. My bill. Loved isn't exactly how I feel right now. I'm like screwed. Hello? <laughs> ah, for me, you shouldn't have. Ha ha ha, I didn't. The amount of money we're paying you to renovate this place, you should be bringing us flowers. Have a nice <laughs> night, boys. See you next week. Bring you. Let me get this. Yeah. Did she just say next week? What happened to tomorrow? 
And she and Bobby Joe have a Dykes on Bikes rally in P-Town. You know, fight the right, that kind of thing. Uh, sweetheart, I really appreciate you wanting to hire within the community and everything, but maybe just once we could have a contractor that doesn't see the whole world as one big gay pride float. Hmm, yeah. Who is in the mystery client? Nobody special. I turned it down. You turned it down? Yes. Honey, have you looked at our bank account lately? I mean, the house, the car. We're in some trouble here, Donald. You can't afford to turn down a job. It was John Rucka. Turn down the job. Mm hmm No. Hello, Donald. It's John Rutka. John, what are you doing here? I want five minutes of your time, Donald, to talk. That's all I ask. No, no, no. No, no, no. Absolutely not. I refuse to let that excuse for a human being set foot in my house. Sweetheart, I'll handle this, okay? Okay. John, maybe you didn't hear me back at the hospital when I said goodbye to you, so I'm gonna try this one more time, all right? Nice and slow. Here we go. You ready? Fuck off! <laughs> Be the end of the John Ruck problem. Donald Strachey is a self-loathing homosexual. He is a traitor to the cause of gay rights. <laughs> he hates himself so much for being gay. He doesn't care if a gay man is shot to death in his own home. Donald Strachey is a hypocrite. A Judas. Who would happily watch <laughs> a gay man die like a dog <laughs> instead of help him find justice. <sighs> Nicely handled. How's Senator Glassman these days? How did you know that... That you're her chief aide? It's my job to know these things. She's got a good voting record in gay rights. Wish the rest of the state senate was like her. Oh, good. So maybe you won't feel obliged to destroy her and I'll get to keep my job. I do what I do, for the good of us all. Yeah, your regular mother query so. <laughs> okay. Timmy, I think maybe you better take Dr. Watson for a walk. I just did. I think he needs to go again. Okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. While I out my dog for the good of us all. Mind if I sit? Ah, please, go ahead. What are you doing here, John? Let you out early on good behavior? It wasn't safe in there. Anybody could get to me to finish the job. Oh, now you're just teasing me. You ever been shot, Donald? As a matter of fact, I have. I didn't care for it too much. Neither did I. But that doesn't matter to you, does it? You probably think I should be shot and killed. No, actually, John, I don't. But that probably puts me in very exclusive company. You think I do my website to make friends? You think I print the Rutka report, pay for it out of my own pocket, so I can get invited to the Chamber of Commerce Christmas party? No, Donald. I do it because somebody has to speak up for all the Matthew Shepherds out there, for all the gay men and women who are brutalized and murdered every day. Somebody has to take a stand before religious hypocrisy and homophobia turn this country into a 21st century version of Nazi Germany. Bravo, John. Bravo. Did you work on that speech all the way over here? Fuck you, Strachey. Oh, come on, Rucka. This is Albany. It's not Provincetown or West Hollywood or an episode of Will and Grace. It's the real world. More gay men live in the closet than out. Whether you like it or not, it's their own goddamn business. It's a nice place, Strachey. This reno is costing you a bit, huh? A bit? Yeah, I'll bet it is. And I'll also bet snapping pictures of cheating housewives isn't exactly paying the bills. So maybe if you won't take my case for the cause, you'll take it for the cash. Somebody wants me dead. Maybe it's somebody I outed who wants revenge or Maybe it's somebody who's afraid they're going to be the next Rutger Report cover boy, trying to stop me. Either way, I need protection. That's a lot of protection. My father died. Left me some money. There's more where that came from. Will you do it? John, I can't protect you 24 hours a day. 
All right, the fact is that if somebody wants to get to you bad enough, they're gonna get to you. Then find out who it is and help me stop him. Donald, please. I don't want to die like this. You aren't serious. To me, if I only worked for people I liked, we would starve. It's not about liking anybody. It, there are certain rights and there are certain wrongs in this world. And John Ruck is an absolute wrong. With deep pockets, in case you haven't noticed, this house isn't gonna fix itself. So maybe I'll ask my father for a loan. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, your Republican congressman father, the one that hasn't spoken to you since you took a job on the other side of the aisle? Come on, I don't think so. Look, he just wants me to take a look at his files, okay? Let's see if I come up with any leads. That's it. Those files have destroyed people's lives, Donald. I just don't think this is something you should be a part of. I'm not gonna be a part of it. It's, it's a job. What do you say? I say we need another bucket. <laughs> Andy? You know who it is, you know what to do. Rucka, you're dead, you goddamn fudge parker! I'm gonna shoot you up with age, you fucking faggot! Another satisfied customer. I get half a dozen of these calls every day. You own a gun, John? No. But now that all this has happened, I can't say I'm not thinking about it. So you alone here? Eddie lives with me. He's at work right now down at Trenton Copy. That's how we get such a good deal on the Rutka report. Hmm. He does a little overtime for free. They give us the print run, half price. Huh. So I just leave New York City, John. You uh, miss the glamour and excitement of Albany? This place belonged to my parents. Mom died a couple of years ago, and then when my father went this past summer, he left it to me. Hold this for a sec. Uh. Uh, eat a lot of this shit, huh? Calms my nerves. Got your teeth. Very high tech, John. Here we go. Well, are you going to help me up or what? <clears throat> Don't get any ideas. Scout's on her. These are my files. All these boxes? Yeah. How long did it take you to come up with this much dirt, Rucka? You consider gay sex dirt, Donald? Even when you're doing it with that little Brooks Brothers hubby of yours? Hey, it's different. Not to the religious fanatics who run this country. They're obsessed with what we do in bed. How'd you get all this? I have my sources. Hotel clerks, deliverymen, a few well-placed bucks a month, and I get ongoing reports of who's coming and going. Especially coming. You know, the way a detective works. Brilliant. Did you put it all on a computer or something? I do, but computers crash, hard drives get erased. You can't beat a good old paper trail. <clears throat> so what do you think? I think it's a toxic waste dump, bro. I think the whole thing should be put in an airtight drum buried in the desert. Well, this one took some ingenuity. Cell phone camera on a timer. I have a series of these. Right on the desk in his office. Your government dollars at work. Is that Assemblyman Bruno Slinger, just two hours after he voted against the domestic partner bill. God, Rick. He puts the ass into Assemblyman, wouldn't you say? Is that Eddie? We should still be at work.
you believe me? Let's not jump to any conclusions. We don't know what happened. It could be an accident, something. Yeah, this is no accident. Yes. <clears throat> I told you somebody wants me dead. We were upstairs, we heard a crash, and my friend came down and there was smoke and everything was burning. Okay, well, look, the fire's out. Well, we found this under the sofa. Now, you do have a permit for this gun, Mr. Rutka. No, he doesn't. But I do. It's mine. Hey, Mr. Stranger. Didn't know you were here. Yeah, I stopped by to check in on the patient. I guess it's a good thing that I did. So I must have lost it during the fire. Thank you. OK, well, look, the cops will want to check this place out. Any idea who? Obviously, some twisted, homophobic piece of shit. My friend makes a lot of enemies in his line of work. He's a journalist. Don't tell me. Movie critic. <laughs> Very good, Cole. <laughs> Hey, thanks a lot. It's good to see you. You bet. Okay, let's go. Did you lock up the attic? Fuck the attic, John. I told me you didn't have a gun. No, I said I didn't own a gun. I had borrowed this one from somebody at the hospital where I used to work in New York. I was mugged once. I wanted some protection. Okay, we're gonna get some ground rules straight right now, John. You want my help? You stop bullshitting me. I'm not. You concern yourself with the fact that someone just Shut tried to fuck you. up. You're going to start by telling me exactly who next month's Rucker Report cover boy was going to be. I don't know. You don't know it's your goddamn website. I mean, I hadn't exactly figured it out. I had it narrowed down to three names, but I still hadn't decided. All right, then go upstairs and get me those three files. I'm going to get a handle on who our most likely suspects are. Where are you going? Let's start looking for some of the pieces of this puzzle, you know, the way a detective works. It's just a small fire. It's out now. Nothing to worry about. There's always something going on at that house. You can keep an eye on him, do you? You a friend of theirs? In a way. Well, I'm not nosy or anything, but ever since they moved in, there's been some party, some meeting, some damn thing going on. Pardon my French. I got nothing against those two guys, mind you, but it's always gay this, gay that, gay, gay, gay. Enough already with the gay. You didn't happen to see anything going on over there today, did you? You mean before the fire truck? Yeah. No, no. Just Eddie, running by on his way to work, I guess. He usually goes first thing in the morning, but he must have been late. Well, what time was that? Oh, an hour ago, I guess. An hour ago, you sure? Yeah, I'm sure. I'm out here for one hour and 45 minutes every morning. You don't get this kind of a body sitting in front of the TV watching Jerry Springer, you know. No, ma'am, I guess you don't. You sure it was Eddie Santon, though, huh? Sure. Tattoo, earring, lots of muscle. This is Albany, mister. We don't get a lot of that type running around our backyards. <sighs> I'm sweating like a hog this morning. <laughs> Would you like to come inside? Have some lemonade or something? Oh, I'd love to. Thank you, but uh, gotta work. Another time, Ben. I always leave the back door unlocked, just in case. <sighs> Jesus Christ, don't do that. I don't like when people sneak up on me like that. Yeah, I don't like that either, John. I also don't like it when people lie to me. What? You're using me. And I may be a lot of things, but I'm not a sucker. I have no idea what you're talking about. 
John? My God, are you okay? I saw the fire trucks leaving and the smoke. I thought you were dead. Oh, come on, Eddie. You knew he was alive. You were watching the whole thing. What are you talking about? I I've been at work all morning. Really? Your neighbor saw you running by the house right before the fire started. Eddie? Well, she's crazy. It wasn't me. She describes you to a T. Eddie, muscles, tattoo, and an earring. And I'll tell you, she doesn't look like the kind of girl that lets a man go by without taking a good look. No, no, I, I swear, I've been at work. John, you believe me, right? Right, baby? I, I wouldn't hurt you. Red Koontz. What's a Red Koontz? It's one of Bruno Slinger's tricks. It looks a lot like Eddie. Slinger must have put him up to this, trying to frame Eddie. Here. There. See? Now you know what we're up against. I don't know anything. But I do have a couple of ways of finding out. John, I promise you, if you were running a number on me, I'm gonna come back here, stomp that check of yours into your foot. Allison, it is not okay if you take an extra day down there. I need you back here now! Because my house isn't finished yet! <laughs> Hello? Donald! Hi, beautiful. How was your walk? Oh, it's fine, fine. Except for the end part, where I almost had a heart attack. What are you doing? Oh, yeah. Needed a soft target. I figured our fireplace would get the facelift anyway, so. So you killed the mantle? Oh, oh, yeah. I'm gonna take this down to Karen Payne at the lab. She owes me a favor. Donald, what is all this about? Well, I'll be back later. If you're lucky, I'll be bringing a bottle of wine. Ooh. What's in a word of advice? Never marry a private eye. Strachey. Detective Bradley Bailey, Albany Police Department. Wonder if you'd mind taking a little ride with me. You like Albany, Mr. Strachey? Matter of fact, I do. Just settling into the new house. A lot of work to do. Uh huh. You and uh, your friend. Okay, look, Detective Bailey. Bob, you can call me Bob. They all call me Bob around here. Can I call you Donald? Be my guest. Is there some reason we're driving around in circles, Bub? Actually, Donald, there is. I got a few things I wanted to talk to you about, and I thought they were better discussed, you know, in private. You know, between gentlemen. What's on your mind? Tell me, how well do you know your client, John Rutka? Well, if you know he's my client, then you already know the answer to that question. I guess I do. And, uh... You're a member of the gay community yourself. <laughs> you think that John Rutka would hire somebody who isn't? An honest man. It's a rare quality these days. I try. So you'd never participate in a conspiracy that involved arson a false report of attempted murder? Okay, you asking me or are you charging me? Neither, Don. Just a pleasant chat between gentlemen. See, you keep saying that, bub, but how come I feel like I need a lawyer? I've known John Rutka my whole life, and the only sure thing I can say about him is he's an excellent liar. In what way? Any way he can. My God, from the age of six, seven years old, he lied about everything from his chores to his homework to where he was going, where he'd been. He pretty much broke his mother's heart. Rest okay. soul. A lot of kids lie, bub. What makes John Rutka any different? He didn't grow out of it. November of last year, he was arrested in New York City for theft of drugs and medical instruments from the hospital where he worked as a nurse. Charges were dropped when he agreed to resign. Okay, so he's no choir boy. <laughs> the thing is, he was once upon a time. Had a beautiful voice, too. But now, why does he want to cause so much misery for people? You'd say he's fighting for a cause. Well, why do it here? Why not in Manhattan or somewhere else? Okay, Detective Bailey. Why are we talking? John Rudkin and Edward Sandman will end up in jail if they stay in Albany. I want you to talk them into leaving town. 
Albany is their home. I doubt they'll go. They leave. I can let some things slide. You know, I talked to the good folks over print and copy where Eddie works. Let me guess, it was his day off. <laughs> You're not the only one on the case, Donald. John Rodka has been a liar his whole life, and I know he's lying now. You think they set this whole thing up? Yep. And now I'm gonna have to charge both of them with arson and probably fraud. And I hate to do that to a fellow I've known my whole life. I see your problem. So, will you talk to them, Mr. Strachey? Like gentlemen. Are you insane? That's Bailey's offer, John. I think you should take it. Just pack up your stuff and go. Bob Bailey is a fascist. You know, when we were kids, we used to be friends. Used to be. But now, they want me out of here. And he's out to get me, just like the rest of those homophobic cops. Including the cops that caught you stealing drugs from that hospital? That was morphine! For a friend's lover. He was dying, he was in pain, begging to end it. You ever been around horror like that? Yeah, I have. Anyway, I didn't steal it. I paid for it with my job and my nurse's license. It's a fucking shame the way people with AIDS have to suffer because of a healthcare industry trying to make another million dollars. Shouldn't you be at work, Eddie? You should take the day off like you did yesterday. Yeah, Bailey called the copy shop. No, I was there. They're lying. They're not gonna tell the cops that I was working overtime under the table. It's against the law. So is arson. Wait a minute. You're on his side, aren't you? You believe that asshole Bailey instead of another gay man. Do you really hate yourself that much for being John, queer? Save the speech, I've heard it. Well, that's what it is, isn't it? You hate yourself. I know all about you, Donald Strachey. I know what happened to you. I know how you ended up like this. That's enough. What must that be like for you, huh? What must it be like to look at yourself in the mirror every morning and see a homosexual looking back at you? Well, I'll bet you want to kill yourself, don't you? I'll bet you just want to die. John! I quit! Yeah, that's right. Just walk away. Like you walked away from your life. Well, sometimes you have to take a stand. Fight back. I hope you're feeling real good about yourself, Strachey. I had another message today. They said last time they burnt the house, next time it's gonna be me. I'm gonna be the next queer bashing death statistic, and it'll be on your head. Back off! I'll send you back your check. Minus expenses. They're gonna kill me, Strachey. And when I'm dead, you're lost because of you, you self-loathing pre-stonewall piece of shit faggot! Gay, gay, gay. Always with the gay. Campy. I, I didn't order campy, I ordered minimalist. Well, it has a certain character to the room. Are you kidding me? It, 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 it looks like Liberace threw up all over my ceiling. Donald, Donald, tell me you hate the chandelier. Hate the chandelier. Hmm. Rough day at the office? Get rid of it. It's gonna cost you. Allison. Get dressed. What? Get dressed. I am dressed. Get dressed to go out. Out? Is it out-out? 
Believed I had nerves of ice Thought I was playing cool Kept away for sharks at bay By staying in the pool Thought I was thinking straight Knew I was best alone Lived apart with a naked heart As cold as steel As stone But even a stone A flint can beat And you got sparks Oh, baby, you got heat in heat in love in heaven. With you, my sweet, I'm all in Donald? The body of John Rutka was found in a deserted barn about 10 miles outside of Albany in what appears to have been an attempt to destroy the corpse by fire. Local police have issued no comment, but we will bring you all the latest information as it becomes available. Hello? Yeah. Yeah, this is Tracy. I was at work. The cops came and found me. They told me what they did to him. It happened just the way that he said it would. Just the way he told you it would. He asked you for your help and you didn't do anything. 
You didn't do a damn thing. And if it helps you, I feel like shit. Is there anything else? Jesus. I figured whoever it was wanted their file back, and when John wouldn't hand it over, they killed him. You called the cops yet? John never trusted him, and neither do I. Eddie, John was gonna pull three files from you guys. He was planning to out in the next issue of the Rucker Report. Yeah, he, he mentioned something about that. He told me he was putting three files in here to look at later. Right here. Yep. Little slinger. Ronnie Link letters. Is that the kid on TV? He hated him. All he ever does is sing about how important it is to be you, yourself, and all that shit. He's a total closet case. John even thought his puppets were gay. Okay, there's supposed to be a third guy. Do you know who it was? You know, he, he never mentioned anybody, but remember he said it was someone that he knew since he was a kid. He called him the ultimate hypocritical asshole. It, it's not here, but if it's... But do you think the file belongs to whoever killed John? John, keep an index. Yeah, on the computer. Database, financial records, date books. Heck it. All of it. All this goes. What? This is a murder investigation now, Eddie. The cops are gonna be all over the place. Anybody gets their hands on this stuff, they've got an instant blackmail business. We're gonna put it someplace safe. Like where? I got an idea. Little early for a yard sale? We gotta hide this stuff. Why don't you give Eddie a hand? He's got the rest of it on the car. Eddie? Yeah. Eddie Santos? Yeah. Oh my god, Eddie! Hello? Um, hey, here, hey. I'm so sorry about John. Thanks. I mean, I didn't always agree with, with what he did, but I... He was just I, trying to make a difference, you know? Yeah. Now, listen, if there's anything I can do, anything at all, please. I appreciate that. Can I make you a drink? I, I know, I know it's a little early in the day, but um, I think considering the circumstances, we can, we can make an exception. Son of a bitch. Donald! What are you doing? There's a friend of mine at the ballistics lab. He's got the report back from the gun we found at your house. John's gun. Turns out it matches the bullet they pulled out of John's leg. I don't know what you're talking about. What the Please. bullshit, Eddie? Did you shoot him? Fuck it, it's over. Eddie, tell me the truth. Donald, did you alone. shoot him? Yes! Yes, I shot him. I did it. But it was John's idea, not mine. And you threw the firebomb into the house, didn't you? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. <laughs> but he planned the whole thing. He wanted to do some, like, reality-based charade to get some attention. To show what kind of danger he was in. Eddie, how could you shoot your own boyfriend? I don't know. He told me that I had to do it. He said it was all part of what he was trying to do. It made me sick. Why me, huh? Eddie, why'd you bring me into this? Because he was getting death threats. The cops wouldn't help. He thought having you involved might save his life. Not a good that did. Where is he, Eddie? Huh? What? Where the fuck is John Rucker? Fire was so hot, his dentures used to his jaw. Them records of shattered foot bones. It all checks out. That's John Rutka. Oh, what's left of him? Talked with him, Bob, like you asked. Not leaving town. Obviously. Obviously. It's got to be tough on you, too, though. Seen something like that happen to someone you know since you were kids. It's a, it's a damn shame. You're still an honest man, Donald. Still trying to be? Good. Now, a friend of mine heard of a story about some files John had, pictures and so forth, a lot of gay people in the area. You wouldn't happen to know where those files might be. You searched his house, didn't you? I got a search warrant. You didn't answer my question. John Rucker was a liar. Bobby, you were right. He's probably lying about those files. Maybe, maybe not. But you'd tell me if you knew anything, wouldn't you? I'll tell you what. I'll ask around a little bit. If I hear anything, I'll let you know, okay? Fair enough. 
Well, that's about it. One more signature. Next of kin. I thought his parents were dead. They are. He didn't tell you about his sister? Oh, my brother was such a fuck up. And a liar. But he was my brother and that counts for something, huh? I'm sorry, Anne. For you and for John. I appreciate that, Bob. Thank you. Funeral Saturday, 9.30 St. Michael's. I'll be there. Promised myself I wouldn't get emotional about all this. Mm. Anything we could do, you just call. Okay. Okay. I gotta go. The lawyer sent over the will and I got a shitload of work to do. Do you think he gave me a share of the bowling alley to be kind or to piss me off one last time? Maybe a bit of both. And hi, I'm Donald Strach. I'm a private investigator. I've been working a little bit with your brother and with Eddie. I'm so sorry for your loss. Well, thank you. How is Eddie? He's doing okay. Um, you know, I think he's still in shock. Oh, God, it must have been so awful for him. I mean, them breaking up and then this, that's awful. I'm sorry, I didn't have the impression they were breaking up. Well, I just assumed it. I mean, the will. The will. <laughs> well, he didn't leave anything for Eddie. Who did he leave it to? Me. You sound surprised by that. Yeah, I am surprised by that. Well, don't you think it's a little bit strange? Not to know when you're in somebody's will. Uh, okay, I think I get the drift of this. Let me tell you something, okay? John was a royal pain in the ass, but he was family and I loved him. And if you're thinking for one second that what? I murdered him for half a bowling alley in a fucking house, you're out of your mind, okay? So, excuse me, but I have to go bury my brother now. What a jerk. Oh, is that subtle, Donald? No. Usually they hit me. John. Yeah, Cable John right here. Hey. Any luck? Not yet. All the files listed on the database are counted for. Okay, did you look under ultimate something? What was it that John called this guy? Ultimate hypocritical ass. So it's the first place we looked, but there's no entry under that name. But there's lots of entries for everybody else. We've been here for hours and we're only on the seat. Okay. It's late. I gotta go. No, oh, Eddie, you, you, you don't have to uh, to leave. You can you can stay with us for a while until you get settled. No. Thanks. Thanks a lot, but I gotta get to work. You going back to the coffee shop? The show must go on. See you tomorrow. Okay. Eddie, uh, look, this is the check that John gave me. I was gonna give it back to him, but maybe you should keep it. Huh? No, thanks. The deal was between you and John. It's yours. Think of it as a finder's fee in advance. You got it. Good night. Hey, Eddie, uh, what kind of car did you and John drive? Toyota. John didn't trust American cars, thought they drank gas like he used to drink vodka. Why? 
Oh, we're just thinking about getting a new car. It was on my mind. It's nothing. I'm sorry. Good night. Okay. Are we getting a new car? <laughs> no, sweetheart. Don, do you think it's a good idea letting him go off by himself like that? I mean, what if something happened? You go to the window. Go. Hey? What do you see? <sighs> Nothing. Oh, wait, wait. There's Eddie walking down the street. Mm-hmm. Look across the street. There should be a big blue car, a couple guys in it, probably drinking coffee. Oh, yeah. Eating donuts. Please. <laughs> but Bailey's had a tail on Eddie ever since they found John's body. He's as safe as if he was in his own bed. Trust me. Look at this. Marcus Bank account? Uh huh. First rule of detective work, my love, follow the yellow brick road. All right, Dorothy. John paid me with a check that said Rucker Report Incorporated. I'm willing to bet that he paid those scumbags that got information from the same way. Have I told you lately I think you're a genius? Well, not lately. There it is. There it is. Field report, give me a break. Damn, it's just initials. N Z. There's another one, DR. Mm -hmm. And H G. Looks like they're all paid the same way monthly. DR is not doing too bad. Look, he's, he's making more than the other two combined. Mm -hmm. $1,400 a month. That's where I'll start. How are you going to find out who DR is? No. Come on, where else you go when you want to find out what's going on under the rocks in this town, huh? Oh, yeah, I'm Deke Steele. Oh, me too. I'm so horny. Yeah, yeah, I'm hard. Oh, man, I'm so hard. Oh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna shoot. You know the best thing about the people on the phones, Donald? I, uh, work for minimum wage? <laughs> yeah, that's good. But, uh, the best thing is, you see, when I pose, there's only one Dick Steele. But over here we have a dozen Dick Steels. I make it an hour, what I used to make in a day turning tricks at the hotel. Yeah, you, see, you see that? You are a credit to free enterprise. <laughs> it's the American way. So, uh, what's up? Well, I need to talk to you, uh, maybe in private? I thought you'd never ask. <laughs> Time for my 2 p.m. week, grass. <laughs> the body's the temple, you know, Donna. Uh, yeah, I've seen your prayer service. I need some information, Dick. What kind of information? <sighs> Any of your clients ever been outed by John Ricca? In other words, do I know who might have killed him? And see, you are more than just a pretty dick, Dick. Sure, I know who might have killed him. I mean, every closet queen in Albany hated Ricca. But would one of my clients have actually done it? I doubt it. Mm, time for my 215 uh, photo shoot. Do you mind if I get changed? Mm, be my guest. Any of those closeted uh, clients of yours happen to be on the police force? You know I can't answer that. It's breaking the porn star client trust. That's sacred. I wouldn't want to do that. How about I give you some initials, all right? And you can give me names of people that might be clients. You can do that, can't you? Let's just forget about all this and let's have some fun. Yeah. The initials, thick, H G, D R N Z. You don't want names. H G, D R N Z. You want this. H G, D R N Z. All right, fine. I know I owe you. All right. And you help me out with that guy in that place that time, but what you're asking me to do is the same thing that people hated Rucka for doing. Except that John Rucka is dead. I'm trying to find his killer and you can help me. So is this gonna make us even? But well, it's a start. Fine. Now, I don't know the first two, but the last one, NZ, Nathan Zenk. It's gotta be Nathan Zenk. Welcome to the Parmalee Plaza Hotel. May I help you? Welcome to the Parmalee Plaza Hotel. May I help you? Welcome to the Parmalee Plaza Hotel. May I help you? Uh, well, welcome to the Parmalee Plaza Hotel.
May I help you? Actually, I'm looking for Nathan Zank. Certainly. Um, may I tell him your name? I just tell him I'm a friend of a friend. I'll just be a moment. Mr. Zank, there's a gentleman here to see you. He wouldn't say it. But he says he's a friend of the... Yes, sir. Uh, yes, sir. <clears throat> I'm sorry. Mr. Zank isn't in right now. Really? Really? May I help you? Hello, Nathan. What the hell? I'm sorry, Mr. Zank, but he told me I'd go to jail if I didn't. Who the hell are you? My name's Strachey. I'm a private investigator. I used to work for John Rucka, just like you. I'm sure I have no idea what you're talking about. Perhaps I can educate you. John Rucka made sizable monthly payments to you in exchange. You told him about things like that. Mr. Zank, are they allowed to do that in this hotel? Get out now! Go! I've heard about you. You're that little Nancy boy Drew running around town causing trouble. Well, you've got nothing on me, so might I suggest that you go and peddle your ass somewhere else? Maybe I will. Right after I give John Ruckus financial reports to the police, the ones that have your name all over them with amounts and dates. So you figure that combined with the testimony of your little front desk butt boy there, I'll put you out of the hotel business for life. What do you want? I want to know who was starring in these little movies you were selling to Rutka. I don't remember. Perhaps I can refresh your memory. No! no shit. All right, fine. One of them was Slinger, Bruno Slinger, the congressman. He used to come in here every couple of months with that little twink from TV. What's his name? Ronnie Linkletter and Slinger together, are you sure? Yes, Bruno used to make the guy jerk him off with a puppet, okay? It was sick. And yeah, not too sick to sell. Yeah, well, the girl's got to make a living, right? Who else? Come on. I don't know. There was a third name, tell me. Somebody that Rucka called the ultimate hypocritical asshole. The what? Somebody that Rucka wanted out more than anybody else. Who was it? I don't know, and even if I did, he, he didn't say anything well, to me. Well, then who did he say it to? Maybe there's some other scumbag selling this shit to Rutka. I don't know. No, please, no, okay. All right. Okay, give it. Howie Glades. He runs the fountain of, of, of Eden Hotel over on, on Terminal Drive. That's very good, Nathan. That's HG. Now tell me who DR is. I don't fucking know, all right? Tell her, Reef. Jesus fucking Christ, will you get out of here? This is going to be hard enough to explain as it is. Thank you, Nathan. One last thing. No, no! Jesus! Just delivering you from temptation. Probably not the best day to ask your boss for that raise. friend, John Rucka. I'm afraid I don't know him either. Really? How come he gave you a little over $6,000 last year? Cleaning services? There are bacterium everywhere in a place like this. Diseases. One must keep things sterilized. There are about 90 references to you and your motel in John Rucka's financial records. I don't think your clientele are going to be too happy if they start finding out you're selling their names. So, you're blackmailing me. Is that the purpose of this visit? No, it isn't. I want to know about Ronnie Linkletter. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I don't watch television. Ah! It's bad, Howie. Uh, just leave me alone. I don't know anything. Uh, Maybe your brain's not getting enough oxygen, huh? Maybe I can fix that for you, Howie. Let's try that. 
Wait, so how's that, huh? No. I almost heard. If you breathe pure oxygen for more than a couple of seconds, your brain starts to swell until it's pushing against the insides of your skull. And when it has nowhere else to go, it explodes like a rotten grapefruit. <laughs> Try this again, okay, Howie? Ronnie, link letter. He used to come here every Wednesday with his boyfriend. Bruno Slinger? No, not Slinger. I know him. This was somebody else. He never got close enough for me to see. I tried. Mr. Rutka would have paid a lot of money for that. But he drove a big blue Buick with tinted windows, and I couldn't see him. Did you get a license plate number? Of course. Mr. Rutka wanted me to keep track of things like that. He would pay extra, especially for this one. He said he wanted to nail the ultimate asshole. Did he? No. Not after what happened in room three last month. What happened in room three, Howie? The mirror on the ceiling. I suppose it was the hours of pounding on the bed that loosened the screws, but it fell. Ronnie's boyfriend get killed? I don't know. Howie. No, 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 I, I, I swear, I swear to you. Ronnie must have called someone on his cell phone because a white car turned up. Two men got out in long coats, you know, like businessmen or uh, mafia. I was afraid that Ronnie's friend might have been a godfather or something, so I kept my nose out of it. One of the men drove away in the white car, the other one drove away in the boyfriend's blue car. You tell anybody about this? No. Ronnie gave me a thousand shut up dollars. So, I went in, cleaned up the blood, made the bed. What about the police? <laughs> no, no police. In fact, I rented the room an hour later to a dwarf and two hookers. It was a good night. November 29th. License plate number for the blue car. What about the other car, the white one? No, the plate was taped up. I couldn't see it. You sold all this information to Rutka? Of course. We had a deal. It is a shame about Mr. Rutka. You liked him? Not particularly. But I did like his money. Now, if you'll excuse me, Mr. Strachey, I have some cleaning to do. Hi, Helen. It's Donald Strachey. Hello, handsome. You still gay? Uh-huh. You still beautiful? <laughs> Just give me the plate number and I'll run a check. <laughs> well, well, well. Here's trouble. How's that? Well, last customer of the day, it's always trouble. Because I always lose money when I make the deal. Art Murphy's the name. Strachey, Donald Strachey. Oh, Mr. Strachey, any particular car you got in mind? I think it is uh, this one right here. <laughs> well, I, I admire your taste, but this one's taken. Mm -hmm. Happens to be mine. But if you want a larger car, I got quite a number on it. No, the... Mr. Murphy, I'm afraid I'm only interested in this car. And why it's been parked at the Fountain of Eden Motel every Wednesday night. 
I'm, I'm sorry, I, I forgot your name. Strachey. I'm a private investigator. I'm looking into the death of John Rucka. Did you know him? Okay. Is that the gay guy they found all burned up? That's right, the gay guy. You know him. I don't know people like that. And I've never been to the Garden of Eden Motel. It's called the Fountain of Eden Motel, sir. Maybe you haven't been there, but your car sure has. So I'll tell you what, how about you tell me who you've been loaning your car to? We can keep your name and the police out of this. Okay? Who drives my car is none of your goddamn business. I'll tell you this. Whoever it is, it has nothing to do with any goddamn mother. Why is that? Because he's dead? Who the fuck do you think you are, huh? Coming into my fucking place and accusing me of God knows what. All right, settle down, Mr. Don't you fucking tell me to settle down. Now, I don't have to fucking tell you anything. You hear me? Murphy, you hear me? Not a goddamn All right, thing. take it easy. Get the fuck out of here, all right? Not settle down. down. Don't you tell me to take it easy. You get the fuck out of here. All right, take it. I don't want to hear a goddamn thing. Get the hell out of my life. Go. Get the fuck out of here, you. Get a good look at him. I can promise you he's going to be limping for a few days. What about the files? They're safe for now. Till I get home tonight and burn him to ash. What? Donald, we still haven't found the right one. I don't care. It's over. You're quitting. Do you remember what you said to me when this whole thing started? But those files and the crap that's inside of them, how they could ruin people's lives, where they just started on ours. Look, I know, I know what I said. And that was before John Rucka died. Okay, I'm gonna call you a doctor. You've definitely got brain damage. No, no, listen. Somebody killed Eddie's partner, and no one's gonna care who it was. Except us. You care about John Rucka? What, what, what about absolute rights and wrongs, huh? Well, I still don't think John was absolutely right. I know his murder was wrong. You need to finish this, Donald. For him. 
meant for us. Because you're you. Ah, oh, fuck! You stepped on my fucking foot again. God, God! Jesus Christ, it's two steps to the right, one to the left, you fucking idiot! You know what? Fuck you, Ronnie. You're the one who doesn't know your right foot from your left. Let's take it from the top! Oh, fuck it. I can't work with that felt fucker. I'll be in my dressing room. Get out of my fucking way. What? Fuck you, Ronnie. Hello, Ronnie. Shit. You feeling free to be you today? I'm calling security. Go ahead. One of them's gotta be on John Ruckus' payroll as well. What do you want? How's your boyfriend doing? I don't know what you're talking about. Oh, sure you do, Ronnie. Your boyfriend. One that used to fuck you every Wednesday night at the Fountain of Eden Motel. You remember? One that got whacked by that fallen mirror. Did he die? Leave me alone. Did he live? Did he live and decide to get rid of the John Rucka problem you were both having by getting rid of John Rucka? Is that where you were last Wednesday night, Ronnie? Were you and your boyfriend having a cookout with John Rucka's the main course? No. I had nothing to do with that. I was at a meeting. With who? I don't have to tell you that. Let me guess. Bruno Slinger. Don't worry, Ronnie. I'm not here to out either one of you. Okay? I just need some answers, and you need an alibi. Is it Bruno? Yes. If he finds out I told you. He'd what, kill you? No. He's not like that. But your old boyfriend was, wasn't he? One from the Fountain of Eden. He wasn't my boyfriend. He was never my boyfriend. I'm gonna do you a favor, Ronnie. All right, you're gonna tell me his name, and I'm gonna get rid of John Ruckus' files on both of you. He's not in any file. He's too careful for that. Okay, he's still alive, good. Tell me his name, Ronnie. Tell me his fucking name. God, I think I'm gonna be sick. Ronnie! Why are you doing this to yourself, Ronnie? Why are you protecting him, Ronnie? What's he got on you? Ronnie! Foot hurts. Well, this is the man of my dreams. Shut the fuck up. Look at that, it's Congressman Slinger. I gotta tell you, Bruno, your pictures don't do you justice, but then again, so few men can pull off the leather harness cock ring look. Where's my file? Isn't that the million dollar question? Too bad Vin Diesel here couldn't answer it for you. Enough. Look, Strachey, I don't have any particular problem with you. All I want is Rutgers' file on me. No questions asked. Well, I got a problem with that because I got questions. Namely, why did you kill John Ruckus? Surely a, a man as big and powerful as a congressman can find a way to handle a situation better. Nice try. But I didn't do it. I wish I had. It's just not my style. You're much more the kidnap and torture kind of Republican. Look, I don't have time for this cat and mouse shit, Strachey. You already know where I was when Rutger was torched. And you already talked to Ronnie. So let's just make this fast. Where's my file? You wanna know? Do 
Come here. Come on. I'll tell you. It's in a safe deposit box in a bank downtown with a note that if anything happens to me or to Timmy, it's to go straight to the Albany Times. You kill me, Bruno? You and your little harness make the front page? Thank you, handsome. You ever get sick of daddy, why don't you give me a call? How much is this gonna cost me? 10, 20? One. You answer one question, you get your file. You give me the file first. No. Who was Ronnie Linkletter's lover before you? That's it? That's your question? Yeah. Easy. I don't know. Ronnie doesn't talk about it. Never mentions his name. Which I like. Means he won't talk about me either. Now, where is my file? I'll send it to you. No. If you fuck with me, you'll end up like Rutka. And I'll light the fucking match myself. Come on, Slinger. Would I lie to an elected official? One more thing. Leave Ronnie alone. He's messed up as it is, with all this shit. Having somebody he trusted turn on him like that. I need somebody to trust. Come on, Strachey. You're the private eye. Didn't you do your homework? Rutka was like a big brother to Ronnie. They had a fight a little while ago, and that was that. What was the fight about? I don't know. Rutka wanted to out some priest, and Ronnie wouldn't help. Why, Ronnie's a church-going boy? <laughs> you really don't know very much now, do you? Rutka heard Ronnie sing in the St. Michael's choir, and he convinced him to get into show business. If your idea is show business, <laughs> Why do I have to go to the diocese with you? Father Morgan knows you. Yes, but he likes you. Look, all you have to do is find out who the parish priest was at St. Michael's when John Rucker was a boy, okay? You wouldn't make me do this if I wasn't in this chair. But see ya, on the chair. <laughs> Will he be more gay? Whoa. What are you doing? Art Murphy, the car dealer, what's he doing here? Hello, Murphy, Irish Catholic, visiting the sick bishop. Irish, like you, that's good, you can talk to him. What? Just find out who he loans his car to. He's got this big blue Buick, just don't talk to him. Why don't you do it? Because the last time I saw him, he tried to beat my brains in with a tire iron. He may want to finish the job. Go. Hi, I'm sorry. Am I interrupting? No, uh, please come in. It's such a shame. How's he doing? Doctor says he's showing progress. They say he could wake up any time. <sighs> Have we met? Uh, not, not exactly. I I'm Timmy Callahan. Well, I'm Joan Murphy, and this is my husband, Art. Ah, two Murphys uh -huh. and a Callahan. Great day for the Irish. <laughs> <clears throat> so, um... Art Murphy. Mm -hmm. not, not the Art Murphy that owns a big car dealership. <laughs> That's me. Uh, are you in the market? Actually, actually, I, I, am, I am in the market. I'm, I'm looking to upgrade from my, uh, my Toyota Flacker. Flacker? Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I'm afraid I don't know that one. Yeah. Yeah, it's too small now. There's no room for me and the, the wife and the kids. <laughs> I need something a little bigger. Uh, maybe something like a, a, a Buick? Oh, now you're talking. I, that's what I drive. Really? 
Yeah, it does. <laughs> Gosh, isn't that something? Well, maybe I could, I could, I could come by sometime and, and take it for a test drive. Good luck to you. Art doesn't let anybody touch his car, except my brother when he did his rounds. That's just because he can write it off as charity on his taxes. Yeah, right. Well, uh, I, I'd give it all back just to have him, you know, up and around again. With God's help, he will be. Oh, Bishop McPhee is your brother. And he borrows the car. Isn't that nice? They lied about the mirror falling on the bishop and almost killing him just to cover up his affair with Ronnie Linkletter. I want to know what else they're hiding. Donald, I don't, I don't feel very good about this. Timothy, please. Are you coming? Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'll handle it, I've all right? I've Father Morgan since seminary school. This is, I mean, this is... I'm not gonna mind answering a couple of questions, okay? I'll take care of it. Well, I, well, I, I don't think we'll take care of it. I don't think that's a good idea either, Donald. We'll talk to him then. Well, I, look, Timothy, relax. Father Morgan, Donald. hi. Well, Tim, well, what brings you out here to my neighborhood? Uh, Timothy had a couple of questions. We just, we just, uh, we were just driving by the neighborhood, and we, it was a lovely day, and we thought that we would... Father Morgan, I'm working on the John Rucka case. Are you familiar? The homosexual activist. That's right. Sad situation. Sure is. Uh, uh, just need to know who the parish priest was at St. Michael's when John Rucka was a boy. It was late 50s, early 60s. Oh, my gosh. Well, that was before my time here. Um, you know, I could certainly look it up for you if you like. Okay. All right, then just give me a moment. Stay here. Okay. 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 Take care. <laughs> Smooth. Father Morgan. Bob, what's this all about? This car. Who owns it? The diocese. And who normally drives it? The bishop does. He did until he had his accident. And then? I drive it now. Father Morgan, I'm afraid I'm going to have to ask you where you were the night of John Rutka's murder, and you may want an attorney present. Bob, I can assure Father, you that I... I don't think you understand me. You're under arrest for the murder of John Rutka. Came out of it last night. This has been a madhouse ever since. Bishop McPhee, do you remember anything about the accident? What? Did you know the diocese is under Bishop investigation McPhee, for murder? How does it make you feel, Bishop? I know, right? Everyone out of here going to jail. Come on, Nikki, come on. I know you. Bishop McPhee, it's Detective Bailey, Albany Police. Yes. Sir, I'm going to have to ask you a few questions. Goodbye, John Rucker. I guess there were some people who loved him. Detective Bailey, this is my partner, Timothy Callahan. Pleasure to meet you. Pleasure. Your compadre is a big help on this case. I taught him everything he knows. Yeah, I've wanted to nab that one for years. Father Morgan? But I, I thought he was just trying to protect the bishop. No, I, I mean the bishop. I've heard the rumors through the years, but he was different than the other priests. He'd pick one boy and stick with him for years. Threaten him, terrify him, keep him quiet. I read in the paper this morning a few more men have come forward with charges of their own. Well, I wonder why John didn't just help McPhee himself. Well, what he could do in life, he's certainly accomplished now. It's 
McDonald's. I want you to know, John would be really proud of what you did. Eddie, I tell you, I, you know I wish I could have done more. I want to pay you for your work. I talked to the Rucker family lawyer, just send him a bill and he'll write you a check. We don't have to talk about that right no, now. No, no, actually, Eddie, where, where, where do you exactly do you want the bill sent? Uh, David Rizzuto, he's here in Albany. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. You taking a trip? Yeah, there's nothing left for me here now without John. I'm gonna go back to Manhattan, stay with these guys for a while and see what happens. You know, I'll take it one day at a time. We'll see you later, Eddie. You too, Timmy. Take care of yourself, all right? You too. Donald Strachey. So, Eddie goes back to the big city to start over. Case closed. If there was ever a case I wanted closed, it's this one, huh? Oh, no. What? David Rizzuto, the Rucker family attorney. So? John's financial records, $14,000 to a DR. It's David Rizzuto. Donald? Donald? Case closed? Sorry. Jesus. Your brother gave some money to a David Rizzuto, $14,000. You know what, Mr. Strachey? I don't think this is very appropriate. Anne, please. Do you know what it was for? Yes, of course. Life insurance. The beneficiary? Eddie, obviously. How much did he get? Now, is that really any of your business? Anne, just tell me. Was it enough for him to go off and live happily ever after? OK. <laughs> what are you trying to say? Just spit it out. Eddie Santon just became a very rich man. Excuse me. Pardon me. Timmy! I love you. OK, I love you too. Good, take a cab home. What? Donald? Where are you going? All right, well, I'll just, I'll just catch a taxi cab. I'll have dinner ready. Have some martinis chilling. I'll just get a taxi. <clears throat> Private eyes. Mexico, you buy me lunch. You're rich. Donald, how oh, fabulous to see you. I'm glad I have this chance to thank you for finding my murderer. Candy? False teeth. Congratulations, John. Nice work. It took a while for my friends at the hospital to find the right body. Stuck an old set of my dentures in its mouth and a bullet wound in the leg. And it all worked beautifully. No, it didn't work beautifully, John. Father Murphy's being arraigned on a murder charge today, and he's innocent. Hardly. He helped McPhee cover up his sex crimes. He did not commit a murder. Look. Outing is over, Donald. He doesn't have shock value anymore. I knew I had to do something more to bring down McPhee. Now it's done. You knew about this? You planted the mud flap in the yard? No. He had no part in it. He had no idea. I hated to do it. But Eddie's grief was an important part of making it look real. I was pissed off at first, but John's back. That's all I care about. John, you get on that airplane, they're gonna extradite you, you're gonna be right back here and in jail on insurance fraud. I guess that depends on whether or not you tell, doesn't it, Donald? After what you put me through, I'd like to lock you up myself. But you won't. Watch me. No, watch me. We're taking the money to Mexico where there's a pharmaceutical lab. 
We're going to establish a network to get drugs to HIV patients who can't afford them here and overseas. John, so shut the fuck up. He's right. Insurance companies cut off AIDS patients after a certain amount of money is spent. So what's a few hundred thousand to an insurance this company? Bullshit. They spend ten times that for lawyers and lobbyists who figure out how to piss this on people bullshit. when those people need the insurance most. It's absolute. So I ask you, Donald. Bullshit. A John, you're a liar. You've been a liar since the day you were born. No. Not since the day I was born. I learned a lie. Do you know who taught me? McPhee was a demon. Don't tell anyone, John. Or you'll go to hell. To eternal damnation if you tell. Those were strong words to a child. And then he'd do... what he did week after week. Jesus, Donald, I was nine years old. Nine. Okay. Go back and tell them I'm not really dead if you want to. Get Morgan off the hook. Just say you saw me in Eddie's car and you lost us in traffic. But just let us do what we have to do. Donald. Please. You once said that you knew about me. What the fuck are you talking about? I had a file on you too. I know all about your army career. You made sergeant, military intelligence. You were on a fast track, but you were caught in bed with a lieutenant. And you ratted him out. And you slinked out of the army with a discharge the second they yelled, queer. Not a fight. Not a peep. This is your chance, Strachey. You can do something decent for a change. Decent. So you lost him in traffic on the thruway. That's what you say if anyone asks. I lost him. Thank you. So, St. Timothy, where does this one fall on the scale of absolute right and wrong? My criminal? You know, I'm starting to wonder if maybe life isn't always so black and white. In Kansas, maybe. But not here in Emerald City. What about Father Morgan? Mm. He'll be out on insufficient evidence. Solid alibi. So as far as the police are concerned, who killed John Rucka? No one. I'll poke around for a couple of months and the case will land in the unsolved crimes file. A couple of years, we'll all forget it ever happened. What are you doing? Let's kickstart our new fireplace with a work of absolute good. Such things do exist, you know? I do. 